Welcome back to 3 Plus U. One of the words we hate to hear regarding ourselves, regarding our loved ones, cancer. And prostate cancer is on a meteoric rise, uh, cases of metastatic prostate cancer. To talk about why and what we can do, Dr. Jeff Mullins, he's with the CHI Memorial Chattanooga, Chattanooga Urology Associate, Associates. And uh, Dr. Mullins, uh, uh, what is it, a 72% increase in cases of prostate cancer? What the heck is going on? Well, so that's what this study shows. What happened in 2008, the government came out with a recommendation against PSA screening, uh, driven largely by the overtreatment of non-aggressive prostate cancer in this country. And what happened is there's been decreased screening for prostate cancer. And what these uh, people out of Northwestern University showed is that the number of metastatic cases of prostate cancer or, or cases where the cancer has spread beyond the prostate and is now potentially uncurable has uh, risen drastically due to decreased screening in men. Now when you say uh, they decrease or the, the screening has been decreased and the government is saying we don't need that and, and recommending against it uh, because of the increased number of screenings in non-cancerous or uh, what's, the, what's the difference? Right. So. Prostate cancer is typically asymptomatic, so the only way to catch it is to screen with a PSA test or a blood test. And because a lot of cancers don't require treatment, and the majority of them were treated in the past, the government came out and said, well, we're just going to stop screening and that will stop over treatment. Unfortunately, that has also led to more men presenting with advanced yeah, it cancer. It stops treatment altogether, it seems like, for crying out loud. Yeah, that's my point. <laughs> well, that, that's ridiculous, but a 72% increase, surely this is getting noticed. Uh, is this right. something that's probably going to be reversed? Right, so it's important to know that this study is not level one definitive evidence that is increasing. It's just an early sign that perhaps we're trending towards having more sense. aggressive cancers. And yeah. it's, it's a warning sign to us as doctors and also to policymakers in this country to perhaps reverse that recommendation and just have men get screened by, you know, and, and use it intelligently. So we have the government recommending against that type of screening. It, it, are insurance companies following suit or are we finding it harder to get those screenings insured? Um, a, a little bit. I haven't noticed that a tremendous amount. Um, regardless, a PSA blood test is not that expensive and it's, it's well worth, uh, it's a good investment in your health. Now you mentioned a blood test. Uh, we were talking off camera, there are a couple of ways to do a prostate exam. Right. Uh, blood work is one of the ways to, to really catch it. To talk about that. Right. So the recommendation right now is to undergo a blood test and a prostate exam starting at age 55 in an average risk man. Now if you've had uh, a family history of prostate cancer, your father or brother has had prostate cancer, we should start screening in you at least five years earlier. And then there's a recommendation out there to stop at age 70, but in reality, um, the people to who are- To stop at age 70. But in reality, um, the people most likely to die from prostate cancer are diagnosed after 70. So in healthy 70 year olds, I think still screening is a very important and smart thing to do. So I know a lot of people will avoid a prostate exam just because of the embarrassment, what they've heard about it, whatever, lots of crazy reasons. But uh, it, it, just for those, just to get them in the door, can you say, hey, come in and at least get some blood work done? Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, the recommendation is for a blood test and an exam, but a blood test tells us an awful lot. And just because you have an elevated PSA doesn't mean that you're going to need a biopsy, you're going to have to have your prostate out, you're going to have to have radiation. It's, it's just a test and it's just a starting point and we can use different tools to evaluate this further including imaging such as MRI, different testing and so it's just a, a, a sort of a starting point for evaluating a man's risk for prostate cancer. And doctor, something that I've heard that kind of freaks me out a little bit to be honest with you is that if you live long enough, everyone, men, will get prostate cancer. If you live long enough, you'll, you'll die with it, for crying out loud. So th that idea has really permeated our society. It's actually a very dangerous idea because the thought is, is prostate cancer something that you will die with and not from? And certainly there's a large proportion of prostate cancers which are not aggressive, which don't require treatment. But there's also a very large proportion out there that are aggressive, do require treatment, and can potentially threaten your life. So we have to be able to determine and catch the bad ones and 
leave the ones that aren't aggressive alone. And you know, I think that's just a, a, a strange thing that caused a lot of ears to perk up, a non-aggressive prostate cancer, mm -hmm. leave it alone. Yeah. That, that's kind of a new thing for a lot of people. Right, so the, the idea is not to just forget about it. The idea is active surveillance. We're watching it very closely to make sure that everything is gonna be okay. And we can do you know, repetitive biopsies, we can do MRIs, we can do genomic testing on prostate cancer tissue to determine the risk of this cancer being something worse in the future. But in reality, there's a very good subset of men with prostate cancer where the recommendation is not to treat it at all because it's not gonna cause symptoms and it's not gonna threaten their life in any way. Another thing, uh, just before we leave, we're almost out of time, but uh, for people to prevent prostate cancer, are there any vitamins? Are there any recommendations health-wise? Right. A lot of people do saw palmetto. You say that's not really catching the cancer as part of the prostate. Right, so saw palmetto is a supplement used to help with BPH or the problems of the prostate with urination. Now, there's no FDA-approved recommended prevention of prostate cancer. Uh, vitamins and herbs out there with some evidence include saw palmetto, green tea, and lycopene. But my general recommendation is to eat a diet that's low in inflammation, sort of a Mediterranean diet. And exercise. The, if you want to lose weight, if you want to live longer, the Mediterranean diet and exercise. Eat right yeah. and exercise. It always comes down to that. Dr. Jeff Mullins, thank you so much. Thank and you. I'm going to read it so I get it all in there. CHI Memorial Chattanooga Urology Associates. Well, there it is right on your screen. Uh, 725 Glenwood Drive. If you have questions about this, something perked your ears up, make sure you call the number on your screen and get your questions answered. It could save your life. 697-0072. Dr. Mullins, thank you so much. Appreciate, Appreciate your it. time, sir. Thank We're you. back. More 3 Plus U right after this.